I am honored to introduce Mr. Jonas Rivera, Senior Vice President of Production at Pixar. Hi, Allison. Hi, Jonas. Thank you, you for being here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're great. Oh my uh, gosh, I'm so honored to be here. Can I just say that uh, I just want to start by um, just saying that I, I'm sorry to everybody because nothing I say and maybe nothing anybody will say will be as cool as Girls Make Beats because that was <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> I was on for like 10 minutes checking that out and uh, oh my God. I know they're amazing. And um, again, Tiffany Miranda's organization, Girl Make, Girls Make Beats, is an awesome, awesome org here in, in California. And so um, we're really lucky to have them do that with us today. Yes. Okay, so on to you, Jonas. I am so honored to introduce you. Um, the Producers Guild of America has named Jonas Animated Producer of the Year for his work on Up, Inside Out, and Toy Story 4. And he's accepted two Academy Awards for his role in this film and is very humble about it. Um, his journey at Pixar began in 1994 with a production internship on the original Toy Story, and he now oversees all feature film production at the studio as Vice President of Production. I have really enjoyed getting to know Jonas and I'm excited for him to share his story with us today. So Jonas, will you share a little bit about yourself and how you ended up where you are today? Yeah, uh, thank you, Allison. And, um, and again, everyone for having me. I wanna echo your thanks to, to, to you and to Ashley Adams for having me. It's great to be, I wish I could see everybody, but virtually here with, with everybody that does such amazing work. When we first, first of all, I was asked to come on and talk a little bit about Pixar and the creative process and what we do and how it's changed, you know, in the, in the last few months and, and how that might, I hope, echo some of the things that everyone here does or, or is wrestling with. And at the very least, I'll just show some cool stuff uh, behind the scenes at Pixar. Um, I'll focus a little bit on Inside Out, which is a film I produced and really proud of. And um, uh, it, it's, it's really exciting. But I want to start when, when this first all started in March, you know, when we all had to kind of run for the hills to work from home. Um, uh, Jim Morris, who's the president of the studio, said, you know, we've got to start thinking about what 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 are we doing at Pixar that that is absolutely necessary. And uh, and I, I said, well, Jim, kind of nothing. <laughs> I mean, we make animated cartoons for people and for families and the group you all do is what's necessary. So I'm humbled to even be here to talk about it. Um, and like I said, at the very least, I hope that there's some echoes in here. But if it's OK, I'll, I might jump in and and share my screen. Yeah, do that. And before you do that, I want to tell you that you're speaking to your fan club, like I told you before. Um, we actually feel like what you do is extremely important. You bring joy and happiness to the world. And so I think that, that there's nothing nothing at all um, to be, I don't know, discredited or reduced in that importance. I think it's just absolutely incredible. And right now, animation content can is keeping us happy. It's keeping us entertained so we appreciate you well that's and, awesome um, well i hope everyone can see this i put together some slides of just to kind of give you a little bit of context of what what i deal with at the studio and and what uh you know what, some of the things and again I, we do a lot at the studio there's so much to talk i can go all day about kind of the process and animation and the technology but i wanted to focus a little bit more on the creative side the thinking it up the story and putting a together movie and i'll focus a little bit on inside out that's me it's my goofy title um and you're right i've been at pixar for almost my my whole adult life i started there as an intern on the first toy story in 1994 and um have worked there ever since but and, and i work alongside my good friend pete doctor who directed up at inside out and uh he's a chief creative officer and uh we we joke a little bit that we started with, on toy story but really both of us have this similar story. Like we think we started our careers back when we were like four years old. This is me at Disneyland in 1974. And you know, in the movie Inside Out, if you, see, if you haven't seen Inside Out, it's about the, the emotions that live inside our, our hand, specifically this little girl, and they collect memories and how they're influenced and how they steer us and so forth. And we talked about core memories in that movie. It's like memories that define you. And this is the one that defined me, my first trip to Disneyland, which set the tone for everything I ever wanted to do in my life. Um, and I remember this day, like literally it was yesterday, and uh, it, it, it became a point of inspiration for Inside Out. And um, obviously I was lucky enough to be part of Toy Story and Toy Story kind of catapulted Pixar into um, 
the scale it is today. But back then, it was this mom and pop grocery shop of a of an animation studio. There was a hundred people then. We we didn't know what we were doing. We were making it up as we go. We still don't know what we're doing, and we still make it up as we go. But there's twelve hundred of us now. Um, one of the things we talk about though in our process, and I thought this might relate a little bit, um, Allison, to what things we were talking about. This is a, a quote that we loved with Pitt and Teller, uh, Teller revealing his secrets. You know, you'll be fooled by a trick if it involves, you know, more time, money, and practice than you or any other sane onlooker would be willing to invest. And that, that describes the process, you know, of animation and the commitment of time. Um, and I, and I, I thought about teachers as I pulled this, this quote out because no one knows really what's under the hood of the process. And it's, any, anybody could kind of do what we do at Pixar. I think we're just the ones crazy enough to sink our whole lives into it. Uh, this is an example. This is a picture I took at 09. This is inside out. This is the very first two page document that Pete Doctor wrote about what would turn into inside out. I remember we sat and read it and, and it was, it was this simple idea that he kind of captured in a two page document that based on watching his daughter grow up, like what if we could tell a movie a story about a little girl, but she's not the main character. She's actually the set. And the main character is her emotion, led by joy. She's a happy kid. And we fell in love so much with that. I think because we were both parents, my kids were young, his kids were old, that that felt movie worthy. And it always cracks me up now when I think about Inside Out Now, you know, we watch it on Disney Plus or see it in the movies or whatever, that this is actually how it started. That's what it looked like. And what we do, and again, these are just again, kind of some boring pictures of nerds in a room talking. But what we're talking about is making Inside Out. We, we actually went over and we hold up, that's Pete on the left and Ronnie Del Carmen, who's a, a, a co-director and a story. Ronnie Del Carmen storyboarded, if you've ever seen the movie Up, that whole silent scene at the beginning of Up, that was single-handedly drawn by Ronnie. And this is us hashing out the very first bones of what would become Inside Out, writing, um, drawing, sketching. That's, that's it on the wall behind Ronnie. Um, every sequence across the top of those boards and every beat in every sequence. Um, us trying to make this movie on paper. So many people think of Pixar and animation as high tech and, you know, in computer science. And that's true. That's part of it. But so much of it is literally scribbling on post-its and losing things and pinning things and erasing things and throwing things on the floor. And um, we thought we really had something here four years before the movie came out. And, it was, it was later that we got to this, and um, I just thought this was worth seeing, because this is, this is probably four years before the movie was done, but we were trying to, we were trying to track just the simple, if you stripped it all away, what would the bare bones of it be? And, and we came with these three points, this thesis, uh, uh, the, the opposite of that, and then the result. The thesis, again, spoiler alert, but the, the, the thesis is to have joy. Everyone wants to avoid pain, suffering, and sadness. Uh, 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 of life. That's what you do. Well, the opposite of that is the realization is that there's actually no way to do that. That's a false goal. And so the result is you have to accept sadness as the part of the joy of life. And that alone, those three things, we, we wrote that, we pinned it up and every little plot point, every character, every design, every shot, we try to tie it back to that sort of thesis of that's the shape of the movie. You could describe the, the all three acts of the movie with that. Um, it's just funny little sketches that, that we were doing. Pete did this one of the character anger and it didn't change that much. If you've seen the movie, um, eventually they of course come out like that. That's joy and disgust, sadness, fear, and, and anger there. Um, but along the way, this is how we got there. This is me literally sitting over Ronnie's shoulder, watching him draw because he's so, so effortlessly skilled. He drew this picture of joy years ago. And I kind of think yeah, this is probably two or three years before we asked Amy Poehler to do the voice. She kind of looks like Amy Poehler. And again, these are just more pictures of we've torn everything down. We've put everything back up. We're trying to figure it out. And you can see the sketches of the shapes that will turn into the movie. I thought this was interesting. We even would stop, we'd call it stop, drop, and like zoom out. Like, what are we saying? Are we, are we so tied into the details that we've lost the arc? And let's remember where Joy's arc, where she needs to be at the midpoint, where she, you know, at the end, you can even see, therefore, Joy realizes childhood is over but there's still, you know, place in life in, in, for her joy to be in her life. And we just thought that was a, a, a powerful and a movie worthy uh, message in a film. So we continued to chase it down. Um, so this is a little more detail. Uh, joy wants Riley to be happy. We really struggled with the movie and that we, Joy, obviously you want, it's like being a parent. You want your kid to be happy. But we, we, we used to say like, 
and again, my kids were young when we were making this, like if I had the power, I would have frozen time so that they would have never changed. And we thought, well, that's what joy would do. And of course that's not what you should do. So there was really great, I guess, growth potential for that character to appear to the audience like she was doing the right thing, but actually doing the wrong thing. Anyway, here we are, and there's Ronnie in our lonely story room figuring it all out. And here we are, I jumped up on the table because we got it. We got, it's one of our writers down on the bottom. We, we got the whole movie. We're so proud. And then we pinned it up, we screened it, and all those cards right here are now on the floor under Pete there because we didn't have it. We rewrote it, we rewrote it. People always say like, oh, we love, love your movies and it's so nice to hear. How do you do it? And the, the, the answer is because there's 10 bad versions of the movie that are on the floor of the hallways at Pixar for every movie you see. One point, this cracked me up. We were having lunch and Pete rewrote the entire structure of the movie on a napkin. This napkin's actually in the archives at Pixar. Um, but it cracked me up because there was more information in this, in this uh, napkin than in, in a lot of the, the story notes. Um, here's Ronnie drawing. And then eventually we, we cut all these drawings together and the script that we've done. And we get in front of our, um, this is the screening room at Pixar. And we fill the theater with everybody, not just the story artists and the writers, but the facilities crew, HR, um, the, the, the kitchen crew. And um, we do that because we're trying to simulate an audience and actually get real feedback on what works and what isn't. And not just the academic, again, writing notes, but how does it feel to an audience? And then we get into this room. This is the worst part ever, but it's kind of fun. This is our sort of brain trust room with all the writers, directors, producers sitting around the table. And we say, what would you think? And, you know, we get questions like, well, what, what, what's it even about? And what got, remind us why you got into this. And I, I got bored halfway. And how's your main character change? It feels like you've got two stories here, which it did. You know, what if instead it's this? And again, what's it about? And all that goes over and over and over and over endless times. And I thought I wanted to show this because we always said our movies are a little bit like college if you needed an extra year, like like me. Um, and, and so, you know, you, you zero, you got this idea, you think it up. That's that two pager that I showed you. And then, you know, you, you, you write and you whiteboard and, and you write a, a treatment and a script and you get all the way or your treatment gets approved about six months in and you do versions of that until you kind of get to script. And then you get a script approved. You're a year and a half in now and you haven't even really done any animation. You bring on your story artist, they start drawing boards. These are boards from up. Um, and uh, y y you cut it together in editorial. This is our editor grabbing those storyboards and piecing them all together. And now, you know, you're, you're deep in almost to year three. And these are screenings. These are every time you're screening it every three months to, to, to try to get it better every single time. Three years plus you get your first sequence approved for production and you don't even lock your story till you're after four years. And that's actually the window of production way over there in the blue and your film comes out. It's a lot of years and a lot of meetings like this going through every single detail of the film until you get it. This is um, <laughs> pictures of us at work. This is, I, I, I also just love how analog uh, Pixar is. Again, it's not all digital. This is us sculpting joy. Uh, if you look close, that's Jerome Ramp, our sculptor. I told him, hey man, we gotta hurry up, get joy done. And, I photoshopped his finger out. I'll tell, I'll put it that way. Um, more whiteboards to figure out the geography of this is inside the mind of a little girl. We had to figure out, well, what does that even look like? How do the, how do the sets fit together? Uh, and yet all the complexity of this drawing, Ronnie did this and we always hung this up and kept it close because it's very simple pencil drawing. By the way, this is like two inches square, this tiny little drawing of, the, of this. That's joy with sadness and bing bong, the imaginary friend just looking up at headquarters, Riley's mind. And we always thought like the whole movie, just like in that three point thesis sheet on whiteboard, the whole movie was, and the spirit was captured in this drawing. And we used to say, if we could just capture the, the, the grace and beauty of this sweet drawing, we might have something. And so that is some, I don't know, like I said, just bouncing around, but that is some of the, some of the thinking and the process that go, that goes, you know, behind the movies. And, um, and some of the wrestling that I do to try to bring that to a, to a point. And Jonas, I told you this already, but I'm going to tell the audience, like as the former English teacher in me, like everything about that made validated the, pro the iterative process that we put students through and just the 
the low tech piece of it is really important, I think, for teachers to kind of see right now as they're struggling with access to their technology and they do a lot, you know, of computer based animation. It kind of shows that an in industry things really start with pen and paper. And I think that's a really valid and important piece. And and just like the the never it's it's never done the first never time. Never done. Yeah. You know, like that's a hard thing to get in the minds of students. They want to be done. And I think this is like it's a really valuable lesson. Um that's just not the way industry works, you know? So I appreciate you giving us that insight because I was like watching that. You could, my grin was ear to ear the whole time. I'm just thinking like, this is just fascinating. Like this is what we try and replicate in our classrooms, you know, so that kids are prepared for that world. Well, that's really good to hear. And yeah, it, it never being done. We always say like our movies are never finished. They're just released. Like the curtain that forces you to, to, to finish something. But the process is what I love. I mean, I love the jigsaw puzzle of an animated film of just the, you, you know, you want to have enough concrete story. One of the things I've noticed, you know, running crews and things is everybody at the studio knows how to do their job. They know what to do. These are really smart and good people. But what they don't always have is the why. You know, why is this in the movie or why is this important? And so it's really important for the director and, and the producer to be able to articulate every single thing. There is a reason, you know, every little detail. There's, it's, you know, Joy in the movie, her hair is blue. Uh, and that's just because we wanted even subtly the color space to join her in sadness just a little bit, just a little subconscious that they, were, they weren't quite out of phase, even visually. So everything has a reason and you, get, you, you don't get that unless you have a long process, a long runway um, to, to dig in, you know? Yeah. And, you know, when we first started talking, I think it was last week, um, you mentioned this idea of your role as producer to harness the creative chaos at Pixar. And I've seen a lot of questions come in. So I'm yeah, gonna... I we should jump to those. Yeah, but I do see that as my job. I mean, it is it is chaos. There's nothing this like I could, if I showed you the same talk for Toy Story 4 for Up, they'd be completely different because the players are different. The people are different. But so it is it's artists and everyone you know everyone comes to it to do their best and there's no right or wrong and so as a producer i look as my job is like i'm the movie's first audience member and i'm not a writer but i know story i'm not an animator but i love it more than anything and so i just look at the movie like i think the audience is going to and i just try to harness what what i like and 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 align it with the director and the crew it's 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 really rewarding that sounds like it. It sounds like a dream job. Um, <laughs> actually, so hey, um, I'm gonna ask my last question to you because I think it's it's a good thing for the the audience to hear, and then we're gonna transition and I'll kind of facilitate this. And if we don't get to your questions, then um, Jonas will be able to see these, and maybe we can do a, a published Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question I have is if there's any advice or guidance that we can give aspiring creatives in our classrooms, what would that be? Well, I think it's it's a little bit even something you touched on. I think there's a little bit of a of a there's a there's a little bit of a false truth that everything is about technology. I mean, listen, I, I, the technology is such a big part of Pixar. I, I don't mean to to be dismissive of it at all, but not an hour goes by in my job where we're not talking about some just old school sense of draftsmanship or storytelling or writing. It is it is very analog. The thought process, the tools we use are very high tech, of course, but in terms of the skill set, I mean, we look at people's life drawing uh, skills in portfolios. We look at sophistication of color, sculpting. I mean, it is, it, it, it's, and sometimes people are shocked. You know, they all ask like, what, what software should I, I learn to animate? I'm like, I don't even know what to, how to answer that because I don't even know if it matters. Um, obviously people have to have a command of the tools, but I guess my advice is, don't over index on that. If you're a student, if you're a teacher, like it is go back to basics. And I know that sounds preachy. I don't mean it to, but it is so true in, in the halls of, of Pixar, the things that we really value and, and, and look, look to, and that light us up tend to be kind of the old school ways. I think it might show up in the films too. Some of them, I mean, we've been criticized for like our films are a little old fashioned and, but we kind of like that, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Jonas. I, um, 
I could see it in the process that you shared. And I think that's, it, it reinforces a lot of those foundational skills that, that teachers are trying to really teach and um, which are really essential to getting to that next phase, which is that digital production piece, you know? So, yeah. and I had a similar conversation with, um, with Lissa Sherman at Noman who said, yeah, you know, we, it's just like pen and paper, sculpt, sculpture, like that is foundational to everything in creative industry. So um, I'm going to shift to these, some of these questions. Let yeah, me, cool. Hey, um, Talia, can I do a quick time check? How long do we have for Q and A? We have about seven minutes left. Excellent. Okay. So let's see here. I'll just go uh, chronologically. Cool. Um, and Rodolfo, maybe we answered this a little bit. I think we might have actually. So what is the best advice to give high school students who want to get in into the low tech storytelling development side of the high tech animation industry? Like how, do, what's the end? Like how do you get that internship or that experience? I'll tell you what the, the you know, the story that I tell on this is that when I, when I, a hundred years ago, when I literally called Pixar asking if they needed help for, or offered internship programs. I, the, the way I kind of approached it was, how can I help? What can I do? I want to work. And, um, and I know that that sounds very simple, but a lot of the students, a lot of the kids that come to us, of course, they're coming out with what, can, what am I going to get out of this? Like what's Pixar going to give me, which you should, if you're an intern, you're, it, it needs to reciprocate. But I got to tell you, every time someone has a little dash of that, I want to work. I want to get to it. It, it, it. There's, there's some. I just always tell students that, like, don't be afraid to, to make it about work because work is where you learn. That's my lens. If that makes sense, it's a, it's a, it's a nuanced thing. But I've always thought about it. it, it that falls out quickly when people are looking to, to get something from, from an internship. If that makes sense. So, anyways, but long, long worded answer is don't be afraid to jump in and and get your hands dirty because that Thank is you, that. really valuable. No, and, and I think that's really important to hear, honestly. I mean, that's, I think our challenge with this generation often is that kind of not, that disconnect between like the effort you put in is what you get out of something, right? And so that work ethic piece is, is essential. And, and I know that as teachers, we always are trying to reinforce that, but just hearing it from you, I have a feeling there's going to be, I already saw it in the chat, like there's going to be teachers here who want to just show this to their kids. Just so right that on. they hear it, you know, because it's it's not something like we can talk, 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 talk. And it's like in one ear, out the other. But the second they hear it from somebody who's actually doing the work, it all it resonates. And so I appreciate yeah. you all of that. Well, look, at, I know there's another question, but just to just to echo that, because it's really important, I think there's it's you could talk all day about this. I never quite know how to articulate it, but Pixar is a place and it's not perfect, but it is really cool. It's a place that rewards passion, right? If you love something, um, again, this is very easy to sound preachy, but just like anything you watch or read, like, you know, when you see something that's real or hear a music that's real, like you just love it. You, that's like, that's what the audience craves. I think that's what Pixar craves too. Just people that bring it for the right. I mean, watching the, those girls, the girls make beats. I'm like those girls are real. They are doing this. Like they love it. Like I fell into that. Like authenticity is these movies that we do are nothing unless they're authentic. Inside Out works because it's a story about us being afraid to be crappy parents, basically. Like it's authentic. You might not like it. It might not be your favorite, but it's authentic. So it all boils down to like being authentic, putting yourself out there, doing the work. Thank you. Um, okay, so you know, those of you who did not get your questions answered again, Jonas and I will go through and, and be able to kind of plug away and give you guys some answers in terms of, um, well, hopefully I can capture this. I will have to talk to the, the stage manager here to see cool. if that's possible, but I think we'll be able to. Okay, let's see. Ooh, this is a good one. Were there women involved in ideating, creating, writing, and producing this film, um, particularly because Riley is a young girl? Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, most of the photos had a lot of men in the images, so I think that was fair enough. It was. It's a really good question, and our writer was Meg Lafove, who came on about when we realized, and uh, it was pretty early on when we realized, oh, we're a bunch of dudes that might not have the greatest lens on what it was like to growing <laughs> up to be being a twelve-year-old girl. So our story artist, which I yeah, I wish I could have created my slides a little bit better, but it's a really good point. Our story artist, um, uh, our, uh, probably at least a third of our animators were women and, um, and, and our writer and uh, our, our production manager who would often, <laughs> and they would often just 
take the story away from the dudes and go, no, no, this is, this is how this scene's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what women do. <laughs> when it's necessary. Great. Thank you. Um, and we have two minutes to wrap up here. So okay. I think, let me see if I can find a question um, that is going to be a quick answer. Okay. Let's just go in order here. Um, as someone who teaches 10 week intro to Maya, I get asked a lot how hard it would be these days to get a job at Pixar or other big studios. What does the industry look for these days? Um, is it good, just a good demo reel? Like what, what can we do to kind of help our students get on that path? I think that, that what we always look for, again, this is a little bit of an echo of the other, of the other kind of the old school tendencies is character, character acting. So when you think about animation and a lot of the students come in, they're really skilled animators and there's a lot of complexity. And I can tell you what Pete Doctor always says is I want to see if the characters are thinking, whether that's the little lamp or, you know, Bo Peep in Toy Story 4. So there's something, I guess, I guess to the students and, and working on, on Maya and putting together a reel, anything that you can do that shows thinking characters tend to stand out when we're looking at a bunch of reels, even, even if the animation isn't as polished. It's all about it's all about sort of the pathos and thinking of each character. Thank you, and um, that's the last question we have time okay. for today. Um, but I want to just extend my gratitude to you, Jonas, for being so incredibly open to this forum and and sharing your insight with us. I think it was really invaluable and. And I'm honored and I oh look forward to continuing conversations with you and, and learning more about um, how we can, you know, bridge the, the divide sometimes between education and industry. So well, I, um, I will do my best to get these questions somehow captured and, and perhaps we can send out some, some answers in writing to these. Yeah, too many, I, would, I would love that. I would love that. I, I, I want to thank you, Allison and, and, and Ashley. You guys are the greatest. I'm really honored to be here. You guys, thanks for hearing me out. And uh, let me walk down memory lane a little bit with uh, Inside Out and what we do. I really appreciate it.